Hi folks, it's uh, Keith Victor Echo 3 Sierra Victor Quebec and also Victor Alpha 3 Kilo Echo India when using Morse code. Now I'd mentioned in a previous video that I would look at doing some of the scripts that seem to be in demand and you know just to give you an idea because I know what it's like when you start and how nervous you are and in some cases terrified to make those first few contacts, first few calls. So I thought I would start today and actually give you a script that I use. And this is a, a POTUS script. It's a very, very simple one. And I'm sure there's purists out there who might disagree with what I've got here, but it's a script that works. It's a very simple one. It's one that if you're brand new at this and you've never contacted anybody on the air, you can successfully get through it. And so this is the one we're going to do today. And so it's a, it's a POTA hunting one. You're not going to call CQ. You're going to go there and you're going to look for a park, try and get that exchange in, and let's celebrate after you've got your very first contact. And you don't even want to go on for another two, three, four, five if you're on a roll, but get one in for the first day and celebrate it. And then, you know, go from there after that. So this is a POTA script, and the reason for starting with POTA is that's such a popular activity right now, and uh, for all ages, it doesn't matter. It's just fun hunting parks. If you've hunted it on single sideband, you're you know, familiar with the basic principles behind it. All this script is going to do is if you start sending and you forget what you're supposed to send, you have it in front of you, and you can successfully complete your call. That's the the basic purpose of this. The POTUS script in uh, CW is relatively simple. It's pretty straightforward and you can practice it and practice it. And one of the reasons for using POTA is it is a, a little bit flexible. You know, when you're giving the RST, you don't have to be a purist and say, oh, well, that was a four, six, seven or something. Poe is per perfectly happy if you do something like a 559 or, uh, you know, 599, you know, take your pick. But you can get away with it. So let's keep it simple. If you're trying to send a whole pile of numbers and this is your first contact, it's probably going to be a little, little difficult and a little intimidating. Don't be afraid to use 559 or 55N because we use the letter N to replace the number 9. It's perfectly acceptable. So let's take a look now and we'll see how I suggest you do it. Um, first off though, before we even get to that point, how well do you know your own call? How well do you send your call? Because before you get on the air with POTA, you better know how to send it and send it clearly so that the other operator on the other end can hear you because Keep in mind, many of these people are running low power. Uh, there's a lot of noise on the bands. There's people tuning up on top of them, people on frequencies beside them. So they have to really be able to pick your call out. And in some cases, your call might be a very easy one to confuse. And if you look at my uh, VE3SVQ call, I know, what is it? There's 18 dots, 14 dashes or something, something crazy. So I don't use that one because I find when I do, especially for something like POTA where there's lots of people calling, nine times out of 10, someone misses something. Whereas my VA3KEI, if I send it properly, they get it. Although I have to be careful with the EI because some people will think I have sent VE3KS instead of KEI. So I have to be careful how I space those. And that tends to be about the only issue I have with that particular call. It's not a it's not a big issue like with the VE3 SVQ with all the dots and what have you. So let's take a look now. You've practiced. You know how to send your call. I would suggest you tape when you practice. All right. So you can send your call. I don't know, send it for two, three minutes and tape it. Then listen to it. How well can you understand your own call? Can you recognize your call? That's the other thing. So this is what we're going to look at when we have this, the script in front of us. And we'll just walk you through it. It's very, very simple. Let's see how it goes. 
Now, this is the uh, Parks on the Air webpage, and I'm assuming at this point that you have joined and that you're happy and so on, and you're all ready to go hunting. And actually, I see somebody on there. I'm going to hunt in a few minutes myself, so you never know. <laughs> you never know who you see on here. So what are we going to look for? Well, up in the top corner here, this will give you your band. There's your mode, so you're going to be in CW. You can arrange your screen many different ways. I happen to look over here. If I've hunted it and I've spotted them, then they're gone. If they've gone QRT, they're not going to show up as well. And you can sort different ways. I happen to like it by frequency. So this one, as an example, 1459, 1453.5, 1467.0. I like it that way so I can just scroll up and I'm not jumping all over the place and it saves myself time. You're going to be looking down here, the RBN, that tells you how loud they are. This guy's AB9CA is at 18 words a minute. So that may be someone you might want to contact. If you go over here, here's another one, 20 words per minute. So they're getting up there. There's one at 14. So this is your very first contact, and they're at 14 words a minute. That's a really good one for you to try and hunt. So it gives you an idea. Here's another one down here. This is actually one of our LICW instructors. He's on at 14 words a minute. So that would be another good one for you to try and contact as well. All right, now this is the script that I use for myself. And like I said, others will disagree and want something different in there, but it does work and you can get good solid contacts out of it, which is really what you need when you first start. It's also very simple so that when you're sending your first few times and you're nervous and you get a brain freeze or whatever, you can quickly recover and go from there. So this is mine, so that's why you've got the VA3 KEI at the top. So how's it going to work? Well, someone's over here, if you're going to hear someone, if you, know, you find them on the POTA page, and you dial them in, and you can hear them loud enough through the noise and whatever, and you can also tell how busy they are. So that person's going to be calling CQ POTA in Morse code. Usually, they will send it twice, sometimes three times, and then they'll send their call twice. Again, some prefer to send it three times. It's personal preference of the operator. They may send their park number, although not every time that they, that they call CQ. And they may send their state. Again, not every time they call CQ. But you already have that information from the POTA page. So if you are using this sheet as something that you can write on as opposed to having it on the wall in front of you, or you know, you're putting it on a, on a paper stand beside you, which I do sometimes as well, I can fill that information in. So I've got all the information I need, and I have the information I need to log as well, like right? call sign, park, state, you know, the basic information that POTA requires. So you listen, you hear, they're, they're at a speed that you can do. You can see how busy they are by how they are replying. Now, they're going to call that CQ. They're going to answer someone, and they would normally end with, you know, dit, dit, right? The, Two quick dit dits. So when they end like that, a number of things happen. If it's fairly busy, you will see a lot of people jump in at that point and try and send their call sign. And it can be awfully noisy and almost impossible for them to pick anyone out. Some will send the dit dit and then a question mark. And again, people jump in at that point. So it's you know it really depends on the operator and how busy they are and how they want to do it. So you hear the dit dit and maybe a question mark. You don't hear anyone immediately jump in, so you send your call. So in my case, VA3KEI, just once. Don't send it two, three, four times like some people do, just once. And see if he picks it up. Now when he comes back to you, I'm going to say 60-70% of the time, especially if it's noisy or there's lots of people on, they're only going to get part of your call. So I might get back um, K-E-I, question mark. So I know that's me. I might, sometimes I get back, you know, the VA and question mark or VA3 question mark based on what they've been able to pull out of the noise. So when you hear that, send your call again just once. 
Don't send it two or three times. Just send it once back to them. And in some cases, you know, you may have to do it two or three times as they pick up more and more of the call and the noise. If for some reason, for instance, I'm a VA, so, you know, first letter is a V. If I hear him answer, I don't know, let's say W1 question mark, I shut up. I don't try and walk on top of that W1 call that he's trying to connect with. Now, to a certain extent, just be polite. Just be polite. Do what you're supposed to. Don't be rude. Don't walk on top of other people. Now, he'll get to you eventually, if, as long as you're strong enough in his area. So let's say he, you know, we sort it out. He answers VA3KEI. He may say, yeah, Roger, Roger, or they just go, thank you. Most operators will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and that's the abbreviations there. And then some will just say you are and send your RST. Others will say uh, RST and then send. It's up, it's up to the operator. And they'll send their state. And then the magic word for you, or the magic proson, I should say to be more correct, they will send the letters BK. That's the key word, key letters that you're listening to. When you've got that, you know it's now your turn to answer. So you do. And again, you go back with that pro sign BK. You've got his information, so he can say BK, Roger, Roger. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, be polite. And then you are, and you give their RST. So I put down here, you could go 55N, five, 55N, five 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 the N replacing the number nine. And you do it twice. And then you send where you are, your state, or in my case, it's a province. So Oscar November. Oscar November, BK back to them, and then he will wrap it up. Usually he'll come back, he may say BK, and then to, uh, do his wrap up. Some of them just go right into a wrap up, and it can come any number of ways. They could say thank you, um, see you later, or thanks for Ontario. They, they'll do it different ways. Some will say the 73, but when they're finished, there's going to be that dit dit. When you see that dit dit, or you not see it, when you hear that dit dit, just send dit dit back. Don't send a long winded wrap up number. Just send the dit dit, get off the air, let him now get on to the next person he's trying to contact, because he's trying to get as many contacts in as possible. And in your case, sit back, relax, and celebrate that you actually have a contact. Tomorrow, go into the POTA site and see if you've been confirmed. Now, some of these guys who are out there for a whole weekend may not, if you're doing, you know, if you speak to them, say, on a Friday or Saturday, you may not see a response on the POTA website until Monday or Tuesday. So don't fret if you don't see it. But you've got a contact in. You've actually spoken to somebody on the air. So even if, for some reason, they haven't confirmed it, you know now that you can do it. And that is the single most important thing that you need to get basically into your own mind that, yeah, this is doable. So there you go. It's a pretty simple one. Um, I think you can have fun with it. I think you can use it to help you get over the jitters of those first few contacts. And, you know, you may revise this script any way you want. Uh, lots of different things. Now, I should have added, and I didn't in the first one, because I just take it as a given that... Uh, when they're calling CQ, and especially if nobody's answering, when they're finished calling CQ, most of them will send the letter K. So it means, you know, if you're out there and you can hear the call, then you can jump right in. So I should have added that uh, when we're talking about the script. So I will post one here on the screen shortly, and so at least, uh, you know, let it run so that you can see it. If I can figure out how to attach a link in the, in the video, if, I'm not an expert at doing this. Um, then I'll add a link so you can just pull it up and print it off. But I'll see if I can figure that out first before I promise that I'll do it. So there you go. I hope that helps a few of you out, especially those beginners uh, and especially those who are not necessarily in a club where they many of them will teach a script or you know a, a process, a protocol. They don't want to get fancy. We'll use the word protocol. So there you go, Keith. Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor Quebec, and Victor Alpha 3, Kilo Echo India. Have fun out there. Get those contacts in and celebrate.
73. So here you are. This is your basic script. I'm just going to scroll down so we get all the key stuff on the, on the screen here. And there's basically the way it's going to go. In this case, I've added the letter K up at the top. But basic information that you need is there.